I'll take part of that time-honored tradition of singing Silent Night to Candlelight. And we're going to join in with the festive praise that's going to happen across our land throughout the night. And in my humble opinion, I think there's something kind of magical about all that. All week long, I have been playing Silent Night, the version by Josh Groban. And if you've never heard Josh Groban's voice, it's his voice is just so soothing, it's mesmerizing. He's got like that perfect pitch, this beautiful baritone voice. And that rendition of Silent Night that he sings is just, it's beautiful. And I've been thinking about those words all week. A silent and holy night. An evening where Mary and her husband Joseph where their hearts and minds were calm and they were bright, where a young mother and even a young father looked down upon God's newborn son and watched him sleep in heavenly peace. And, and as they did, as Mary cradled her son in her arms, I have to imagine that all three drifted off into a heavenly sleep filled where Mary and Joseph, with peace in their hearts, dream of what their son, Jesus Christ, would bring. Let me ask you a rhetorical question, especially for you adults. Do you ever wonder what it would be like to fall asleep every night in heavenly peace? No tossing, no turning. No anxious thoughts, no fear of any kind, no fretting. I bet if you're anything like me, you've probably experienced a, a few sleepless nights in your life, like the ones you have when you just go to bed at night worrying about something that's completely outside of your control, where your heart and mind can't stop racing, where you're fretting with a little bit of fear, and maybe amid all of this, you end up trying to pray yourself to sleep thinking, Lord God, just help me fall asleep and, and take all this worry, this anxiety, this fear away from me and help me wake up afresh. I've been there. I think it's safe to say that if you're over a certain age, you probably experienced a few of those nights too. You know, Joseph did. Joseph, the man called by our Lord God, Heavenly Father, to raise the Son of Man as if he was his own, so that one day Jesus Christ could understand his destiny as Messiah, as the Prince of Peace, as Emmanuel, God with us. Tonight we're going to go back to the gospel. We're going to take a look at the Christmas story one more time, but this time from Joseph's point of view, something we don't do very often. Joseph, a young man that I'm sure was just so excited to be engaged. For years he had been looking upon Mary, this beautiful young woman, and he dreamed, mm, what would life be like with her? They fell in love. And their fathers arranged for the wedding. And in traditional Jewish style, they gathered together for the wedding, a private family ceremony at first, where husband and wife come together. Their two fathers in the background, the rabbi right close by. They share in a cup of wine, a new covenant between the two, if you will. And their fathers sign a legally pledging document stating that the two will become married. They go their separate ways for a short time. The groom goes home with his dad to build on, in addition to the house, if you will. While the bride goes home, keep in mind that's more than an engagement. It's more like they're legally married. They're just not together yet, if you know what I mean. She goes home with her mom and dad, and she gets ready for the wedding. She buys everything she needs for her wedding gown, and she finds her bridesmaids, and they all get themselves ready, as we hear in the Gospels, awaiting the day 
when the groom's father says, okay, son, go get your bride. Well, in that time, she gets a message from the angel of the Lord stating that, behold, favored one, you are to carry within you the son of man, the savior of the world. And she gladly accepts the message and the truth. Then she realizes, I've not been with a man. And she goes off to her cousin Elizabeth's home where her cousin Elizabeth is six months pregnant herself, a woman that was much older and barren in years. And while she was with her cousin's house, the baby grew within her womb. Well, in time, she had to go back home. And news of her arrival, as she's coming into the village, I got to imagine that Joseph was just so happy and excited to see his fiancée. But the moment he sees her, he sees the little lump growing into his, her belly. And I would imagine right then, in that moment, his mind starts to race. A man who was excited to get married, but then he finds out that his fiancée is pregnant with a child that isn't his own. And now an unforeseen event has caused his heart and mind to fret with fear. We go back to the gospel and hear about this time in Joseph's life and the gift that God gave him when Joseph needed it the most. You know, moments ago in our gospel reading over there, we heard from Matthew chapter 1 verse 19 how Joseph was a righteous man and how he didn't want to publicly disgrace his wife. So he decided to break their engagement quietly. And in verse 20, we hear from the gospel writer Matthew how Joseph was considering all these things. I think that was Matthew's polite way of telling us that Joseph was probably kind of freaking out. His mind was probably racing. He probably couldn't sleep. He was probably tossing and turning night after night after night, trying to figure out what to do, all the while probably praying himself to sleep. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? If we listen closely enough, we can almost hear Joseph's thoughts echo down throughout time. Lord, what am I going to do? This child isn't mine. I didn't break my vow. And I certainly don't want to see Mary dead, but everybody in the village is calling for her head. And Father God, this is a disgrace. This is a shame for both she and I. God, what am I going to do? Who among us wouldn't feel the same? Who among us wouldn't ask the same? As I've done many, many nights before, and I bet as a lot of you have done too, I prayed myself to sleep, just as Joseph probably did. And then then one night, as the Gospel writer Matthew tells us in verse 20, God seeing Joseph's anxious thoughts, the Lord sent a messenger to Joseph in his dreams to put his heart and mind at ease. The angel says to him, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid for Mary. Take her as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She's going to have a son, Joseph. And you, Joseph, are going to name him Jesus, for he is going to save his people from his sins. The Lord was assuring Joseph that Mary was pregnant with the Prince of Peace, with Emmanuel, with God with us, so that in time, each and every single one of us here tonight, every Christian believer throughout our land and throughout our world who believes in Christ could rest easy every single night in heavenly peace. And so that one day after our eyelids close for that final time and we awaken to peace in heaven, that we all seek. You know, that message of peace was one that I'm sure Joseph needed. And I bet it's one that helped him sleep throughout the night. And in verse 24, we hear that as Joseph awoke, he did just as the angel instructed him to do. 
You know, Matthew was telling us that God eased Joseph's heart and mind and gave him peace. And one might say that Joseph became pregnant with peace as his wife Mary carried the Prince of Peace within her womb. And then that night, and from that night forward, Joseph would have understood the peace of the Lord and probably slept in heavenly peace most nights. A gift that probably most adults would die for. And months later, when it was time for the baby to be born, Joseph led his wife on a long journey to his hometown so they could be registered as Caesar demanded. Wherein on that holy night that we celebrate tonight, the Prince of Peace was born so that everyone who believes in him could sleep every night in heavenly peace. You know, Jesus was the gift of peace that Joseph needed. Jesus is the gift of peace that we all need. I know you've heard the story before, at least some of you, but I think it's worth repeating. There was a time in my life just eight years ago this week, while I was born again and I was doing as I'm doing now, my heart was not at peace at all. Fear caused me to fret. I tossed and turned night after night after night as my heart raced with anxious thought. And yet, even though I was born again, the peace of Jesus Christ was a a gift that I had yet to grasp and take hold of. But miraculously in one night, before New Year's Eve, the peace of the Lord flooded my heart like at no other time in my life. God set my heart at ease. He took away all my fears, all my anxieties, and he helped me sleep at night no matter what the days, the months, or the years would bring. You know, some of you sitting here tonight might be experiencing Something similar. Maybe your mind is racing. Maybe you're having thoughts of, Lord, what am I going to do? Maybe you're praying yourself to sleep at night with worry and anxiety. And if that's you, let me encourage you, do as Joseph did. Cry out to the Lord. Night after night after night. Asking him to give you that gift of heavenly peace of his son, Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus could be the gift of peace that Mary and Joseph needed, and if Jesus could ease my heart with this peace, well, then he can do that for you too. Jesus is the gift of peace that we all need on this beautiful Christmas Eve. As we close our worship service tonight, singing Silent Night, let the words of that timeless carol Become your prayer to the Lord. It is my prayer that the Prince of Peace blesses each and every one of you and keeps you near and dear to his heart. It is my prayer that Emmanuel's radiant face shine down upon you and be gracious upon you. And I pray that God's favor comes so upon you that his heavenly peace will help you sleep in peace this evening and every night of your life until one day, alas, that your eyes awaken to heaven's infinite and radiant eternal light. Amen. Let me pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus He is our hope. He is our love. He is our joy. And he is our peace. For all who believe, you put him at the center of our lives. Help his light guide our paths in the day ahead. May we know him more every and every day. From here forward. Bless all who hear my voice this evening. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.